Uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, this is our panel for Florence University Arts uh, studying abroad in Italy. Uh, I am Mandy Pierce. I'm the director of study abroad. Uh, we have Catherine Nevels, our study abroad director, our study abroad advisor, almost gave her a promotion. Uh, and Ebony Majid, our coordinator for finances and scholarships. Uh, and then I'll let our panelists introduce themselves as well to you. Okay, hi, I'm Lauren. Um, I'm a senior at CNU. My major is psychology. I'm minoring in childhood studies and I'm also in the MAT program here at CNU. Um, I went to FUA this time last fall, so a year ago from, I guess, this semester. And I wanted to go to FUA, not I guess FUA, but Italy in general because I'm Italian, so I have a very strong connection to my Italian heritage. And so Italy was my main destination. And then FUA was the best program that had lined up with all the courses I needed to um, get checked off. And so they offered a lot of different courses. Um, so that was why I chose FUA. All right, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm also a senior. Uh, I'm a history major and a poli sci minor, and I'm also in the MAT program. And I went to FUA uh, this past spring, and I just chose FUA because I loved the, all the classes, and some of my friends were also going, so it just seemed like a good fit, and it was. Ciao, everyone. My name is Mattia, and I guess how you can hear by my accent, I'm from Italy, and I'm here representing Florence University of the Arts. I'm the alumni and as association and career center coordinator here at FUA AUF. And I do collaborate also with our communication department in regards to university relation. And I'm also professor. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna start with our topic about um, the classroom and academics. Uh, if you guys have any questions from the audience, uh, feel free to use the chat to send any questions that you have. And then at the end, we'll, all, we'll address those questions. Uh, and then also like at the end, we'll allow you to unmute yourself if you prefer to ask your question rather than chat it. Um, but to get started um, from our student panelists, um, can you tell us what classes you took at FUA? Did you have any favorites? Uh, and how are they different from being here at CNU? So I took four different classes. I started out with five, but then I ended up dropping one class. So I took a modern dance class, um, two site classes, so a culture shock class, and then a drug abuse and behavioral addiction class, and then a physics class. Um, the classes are once a week. They're about two and a half hours long. I guess now they've been extended to two hours and 45 minutes because of COVID. Um, but when I was there, it was two and a half hours. Um, it seems super long, but they're only once a week. So it kind of goes by fast and you have like the rest of the week to chill. I only had classes, I think on, what was it? Monday and Wednesday. So I had like a super long weekend to go and travel if I wanted, or just to stay in Florence and hang out. Um, the class sizes of FUA are small, so it resembles kind of the CNU community of smaller classes. So that's really comforting and you won't kind of like feel out of place um, from that which I really liked. Uh, my favorite class was my modern dance class, definitely, because we got to go to our professor's dance studio he actually owns and does stuff with. So that was a lot of fun to see that and see what he does in his day-to-day -day outside of teaching our class. Um, so I took five classes. Um, I took a wine culture class, which is so much fun. Um, and then I did Secret Gardens, um, International Organized Crime, and then I took a class on the Mafia. And then I also took um, this like short class, it's Cultural Introduction of Italy. And this was like by far my favorite class. It's like one week before the semester starts and you like start in Rome and you travel with your class and you like go to a bunch of cities and stuff. And that was definitely my favorite class because like you get to know everyone really well and it's just like, you get to learn a little bit more about the country before you're just like thrown into the program. Uh, so I really loved that. But then the rest of my classes were like Lauren said, like once a week and everything. And I only had class like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I think. So I had like a long weekend um, every week, which was super nice. Yeah. All right. And then um, for our students, uh, can you tell us how you got to class? Because as our, our audience might not realize is that you're, you're scattered a little bit around the city and so is uh, FEA. So can you explain that a little bit? 
I was lucky and I was able to walk where my apartment was. I mean, every like apartment is very central and in the city of Florence. So everything's super walkable and you burn a lot of calories that way. I'll tell you, but my classes were all around the corner from my apartment. So I got super lucky, but nothing is more than like, like a 15 minute walk. Like that seems long, but it's super quick. And I really liked walking around the city anyways. Yeah, I walked all my classes, and I think the furthest one was maybe like 10 minutes, so it's not bad. All right, so for Mattia, uh, can you tell us what you teach and how do students communicate with FUA faculty? Um, is it similar um, to what you know about the U.S., or how, how should they communicate and interact with you? Sorry, I'm a professor of social media class. Okay, so I usually don't teach how to get more likes on your profile, but we do on this uh, journey around, you know, the history of communication and journalism and then land into how social media interact with politics, environment, social movement, pandemic as well. And we see like how social media are moving on nowadays. Uh, we do have like a Moodle platform, platform called MyFUA in which professors upload everything you might need for each course and it also serves as a chat. So you can always in any moment uh, get in touch with the professor. You always have the email of your professor and then as Laura and Sarah said before, Florence is really small. So sometimes you're just walking around and you just, just meet with the professor in one of the FUA facility or just around the city. Uh, professors are really welcoming here. We have an international, like they come, most of them, they come from Italy, but we have an international body. And so there you can ask whatever we want. Then together with this, we always have our student life department or academic office ready to help you. Excellent. Um, I should mention too, because um, we didn't uh, touch on that before we move on to housing, it's just that all the classes are going to be taught in English at FUA, uh, unless it's an Italian language course where you're trying to study Italian. <laughs> um, so it's easy to understand your professor. Um, so our next topic is housing. Um, and so I might have Mattia talk a little bit more about um, you know, most of our students choose apartments, but can you give a brief description of uh, the types of housing or what an apartment um, a student should expect in an apartment. Okay, so our campus, we always say that is the city of Florence. It's Florence, despite being an international and super famous city, at least the city center, which is the one that you will navigate it, it's really small. We have seven facilities spread all over the city center, so that's why we say that our campus is the city center of Florence. All our apartments are within 10, 15 minutes, 20 minute walking, to, to the closer facility. But it's a walk inside an open air museum. So it's a nice walk like Lauren said before. And we do not have dormitory dorm style accommodation because they were at the time of the Renaissance. And so what we want and what we have are Italian style accommodation. Uh, this also because we want our students to feel like locals. So you won't be like a foreigner in Florence, like a tourist, but we want you to interact with the community, to live like an Italian and cook as well. So basically what we have, we, we have Italian apartment in building, live it by other Italian, other Itali uh, Italian students, international students or anything. So you will be living in a shared apartment to have, together with other Christopher Newport uh, students or other FUA students. Excellent. Um, for our students, can you tell us a little bit about uh, where you stayed, where it was located, um, what it included, like what you did for meals, and did you have a kitchen, that sort of thing? So, like as mentioned, I stayed in an apartment, so I ended up living with seven other girls, which seems like a lot, and it kind of was, but it, there was six of us from CNU, so you'll usually, I'm assuming, be grouped with peop other people from CNU, so it kind of gives you that, you know, familiarity and community already, but then there were two other girls from Florida, so there were two other students there, so it was nice to meet other people, and our building was, like, you know, 
you lived with other Italian Florence residents. So you were very immersed in the culture already. Um, there were three bedrooms. So there was one big room with four beds. And then there was two other individual rooms with two beds in each. We had two bathrooms. There was kind of a kitchen and mixed like dining slash living space. So the kitchen had all the amenities that you could need. And if there was anything that you did need, you could go and buy it. Um, but it really wasn't necessary because you were pretty much provided with everything that you needed. Um, for meals, since we had a kitchen, I cooked most of my meals throughout the week and bought groceries, you know, at the local grocery stores that were down the street from our apartment. Um, so that was a way to save money. Um, of course, we went out and explored restaurants around the city, you know, to immerse ourselves in the culture a little bit and see what else Florence had to offer. So that was really nice. Um, in our apartment was again, like I said, in the city. So it was super close to the Duomo and super close to all the classes and other shops. Yeah, so I was also in an apartment and I was with two other CNU students and then two girls from Pennsylvania. And so our apartment was on like a pretty busy street, but it was nice to have like restaurants and a bunch of stuff on it. And um, me and the other two CNU students, we all shared one room and then the two other girls had like their own single rooms and then we had one bathroom for everyone. But the apartment was really nice. We had like a big kitchen and like Lauren said, like it came with everything you needed. Like there were plates and like appliances and everything like that. So we were able to cook a lot, which was really fun and like helped us get to know our other roommates a lot better too. But the apartment was like super close to like pretty much everything. So none of them, I feel like, are really far away from, like, the other FUA buildings or, like, the popular areas in Florence. Thank you. Uh, so now we're going to talk a little bit about money and finances. Um, can, uh, for our students, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what out-of-pocket expenses you had? Um, you know, did you have any common expenses that you can talk about um, for students, like how much a, a meal might have cost you out, um, or if it's similar to, to being here in the U.S.? Um, so kind of out-of-pocket expenses were more so like groceries, eating out, shopping, you know, the kind of usual, any other course fees you might have to pay for your classes, which those are very small, but sometimes if you have like kind of a field learning experience, you'll have to pay a little bit of money for that. Um, other than that, other transportation fees, like bus tickets, tram tickets, which those are super cheap anyways, um, and other, any other little goodies you might buy. But um, as for a typical cost of a meal, there was a lot of restaurants that did a lot of student deals and had a lot of discounted stuff. And you can kind of like find your way to like get on the cheaper side. Um, I would say, I'm trying to think, in a minute <laughs> but maybe around like 15 euros give or take I think it kind of depends on what you're looking to um, eat and where you're eating out because there's definitely higher scale places you can go and eat and there's definitely like lower scale places you know it's just like being here um, you kind of have to manage your own money as to like what you're what you want to get out of your experience in Florence and what you value um, so that's a very personal decision. I'm willing to talk with any of you about that more if you want. Um, but I definitely spent a lot on traveling. So that was more like outside of Italy on like train tickets, plane tickets, whatnot, which there's a lot of apps that you can use to do all of that. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's very personal on what you spend your money on. Yeah, I feel like what I found was a lot of it was cheaper than it was here. So like groceries and stuff were less expensive, which was really nice. And then for like meals, like if you want to do out for lunch or something and you just want something small, like you could find something for like five euros. Um, but then obviously, like if you wanted a nicer dinner and you want like wine and stuff, it's like maybe 15 or 20 euros. Um, but again, like you're able to cook a lot. So like you can definitely budget that out of for when you want to go out and spend more money. Um, but I feel like it was relatively cheaper than I was expecting. Like um, train tickets are so much like less expensive there than they are here which was really nice. So it's like easier to travel to. Um, so it's really easy to make a budget. And we found a lot of restaurants that had like free wine for students and stuff like that. So if anyone's interested in that, I can like give you names of restaurants and stuff because that was really helpful. Excellent. So before I forget, I might have um, Lauren and Sarah, if you don't mind putting your email addresses in the chat and that way, if anyone does want to uh, contact you afterwards, they know how to get in contact with you. Um, so along with the finances, um, do you guys have any 
financial regret that you might have or a financial choice that you would have redone uh, if you could go back uh, to your experience? Um, as for food wise, I would definitely, because I forgot to mention this, take advantage of FUA's two little kind of, I guess, cafe and restaurants that they have gonzo and fedora they make some really good food and it's high quality it's so much better than what you would get anywhere else we'll say but um and the students make it themselves they have a culinary department there and the food's really good there's like a menu set menu for i think about two weeks and then they change the menu and you get i think i think it's like 95 points or something like that and each i don't know menu on uh, item on the menu has like a certain amount of points it's associated with and then like drinks are associated with points so you can kind of use your points to eat lunch or something so I wish I took more advantage of that but all my classes were kind of in the window that fedora was open which was like 12 to 2 for lunch so I definitely recommend taking that up because that's also like free points you have so yeah and if I can add something like now, now Fedora, now like since summer, Fedora is open from 8.30 a.m., 9.30, just because of, you know, this window. Fedora is our pastry lab. We do also do sandwiches, our students do, and light lunch and aperitivo, and Gamso, the school restaurant, in the, both places you can use the points or units, which are included in your tuition. And I don't know if Laura and Sarah, that was also at your, the time you started FUA, but we now also have a spa entirely managed by students and you are also able to use those points or units at the spa so you know nails massage or anything okay so this is important I always tell students use those units because it's something you have paid for so like as Lauren says all right it's not a school canteen it's a fancy restaurant and with good good food and everything because it's made by our students who are getting ready to become like Michelin star chef, for instance, and it's open also to the public of Florence. So it's also a way to engage with the community. Sorry to interrupt. You're good. And it's really good. And a lot of people go. So I would go and go early because it fills up fast. So it's very popular. Yeah, definitely go because you're already paying for it, like intuition. Um, so you don't want to like waste all that at the end if you didn't use any. Um, but I was also going to say too, for finances, figure out what ATM your bank like supports when you go over there. Cause when I went, I wasted a lot of money going to like random ATMs that had like huge fees to like switch from dollars to euros. So like figure it out before you go so that you can go to specific ATMs and not just like, cause that's just wasting money. Um, so that's something I definitely regret. So definitely figure that out. Cause there are ATMs like connected to banks that won't have as high like transaction fees. I think that's another thing I'm going to insert one second, but there are a lot of ATMs all over the place and they're just, you know, basically for profit for themselves. They're attached to like stores and other businesses. So don't use those. Make sure you go to a bank and there's lots of those. You kind of just have to pick them out and like, you know, pick out the certain one you'll go to. And that's the one you'll go to every time, just so you know, and then take out a good chunk of money every time you go. So you don't have to keep going back repetitively and then getting those, you know, fees, surcharges kind of racked up because it does rack up after a while. But I know for my bank, I got the money back after a while. I mean, it took a little while and it wasn't that much, but I did get some money back from those um, international fees. All right, so we're about to wrap up our money and finances. So um, I guess do any of you guys on the panel, um, Mattia, Lauren, Sarah, uh, have anything about just, um, I guess, talking about what you kind of prepaid to FUA and then um, was there anything in the process of paying FUA that you uh, either found confusing or difficult um, that you would want other students to, to understand a little better? Um, okay, I guess I'll go first. Uh, I think the process is very easy. They lay it out for you and they're also super helpful and willing to communicate with you in any way. So if you just email them, they email you back super quick. Just a reminder, I mean, they have a different time zone than we do. So it might take a little while, but they're very responsive and willing to help you out with anything. I thought the process of you know paying tuition and doing the permit to stay and all of that was very easy and they were very willing to help you, especially when we got there to Italy. They walked you to, I think it was like the post office that was there 
to help you submit all those forms and get those um, together so that you're not missing anything. Just be in tune and be, you know, kind of looking out for all that, all of that. So if you're not, you know, clueless, then you'll get it. It'll be fine. Um, the only one thing that I would say to, you know, watch out for when you sign up for classes initially here at CNU for FUA, I had signed up for five classes, but then I ended up wanting to switch out of one or drop one. So I didn't realize there that I wouldn't get a refund for that class. But instead, I what I could have done was switch that class I dropped with something else. So I technically should have done that instead and not have just dropped the class class completely because then I kind of wasted some money for my parents. So that is one thing that I would recommend just to keep an eye out for because, you know, some things might change or the class might not be as it, you know, you thought it would be. So just make sure, you know, you keep, you know, you keep that. I would say less is more, you know, you can always add another class and then pay on top of that. Um, don't go like too overboard. And then if you drop it and then don't want to fill it with another class then you're losing money. Yeah, and I think too, a lot of the classes have like field learning with them. So that's gonna be like an extra cost once you get to Florence. So just remember to like budget for that as well. And also like the permit to stay and the visa also have like fees with them. So just to like make sure you have enough for all of that. Yeah, and include it with, I mean, the tuition with housing courses, partial meal plan. We will also have a bunch of extracurricular activities, which at least for the beginning, it's helpful, especially if you come alone, let's say you don't know anyone, or if you want to just discover more the city of Florence, we do organize like tour around the city, uh, divided per neighborhood. Uh, we do sports nights, and I mean, sports in Italy is only football, like soccer, okay? And we do also exchange lang language exchange program, cultural exchange, Italian family club. I mean, all those activities and also the use of the gym, it's all included. And of course, also a 24 hour emergency phone in case of need, if you want to tell this to your parents, maybe uh, we have an advisor on call 24 hour a day to uh, seven days a week, in which in case of emergency, you can always call us and, and we come to rescue. Excellent. Um, so I think, um, Mattia, you kind of um, touched on this, I think, but is there anything you want to add as far as just a recommendation to a student looking to consider FUA? I'm, fr I'm from Florence, so of course, Florence is the most beautiful city in the world, all right? And I recommend you guys to come study FUA because it's a unique experience, okay? We are not just an institution. We are not just a university. We are something like we are a, something that want you to be, to become half Italian, all right? The, so to really experience to uh, 360 degrees, the study abroad experience. I always suggest students to, of course, pick some courses of your major, but also if you have some elective left, please keep some elective. We do offer a huge variety of courses, which are unique unique that maybe you won't, will never be able to do it uh, in, uh, in US. I'm talking about, you know, food, of course, we are in Italy, wine studies, but also iPhoneography, history of mafia, like Sarah, Sarah said, and like unique courses. So, and of course, I mean, I suggest everyone to come with an open mind because cultural shock is actually a thing sometime, uh, but we are here to help you and as Lauren said, we are available almost 24 hour and we do answer your email and everything. So don't worry and just come get on the plane. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so for our students, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you did outside the classroom to add to your overall intercultural experience? And then uh, were there any like clubs or sports activities that you joined um, at FUA? So in my experience, the FUA offers a little bit um, of like the tours, as Matteo is saying, or other opportunities. So me and my roommate went to a, an Italian opera, which was super cool, and an old church that was really neat. Um, we went to a bunch of museums. I mean, there's world famous museums that are there, obviously, so you kind of need to take advantage of those. Um, we did a couple of the walking tours with FUA, so to kind of just get you acclimated, um, and they do those at the beginning when you get there, so that kind of helps you, you know, get your bearings straight of where you are in the city. Um, let's see, what else did we do? We went to the food markets that are there. There's a lot of kind of 
farmers markets, as you know, we would call them here. Um, and then the Christmas markets when it got closer to December that they had up. Um, I also volunteered at a local middle school that was right outside of the city center in Florence. And I hope helped co-teach uh, two English classes for like fifth and eighth grade equivalents. And that was my favorite part um, about being in Florence by far. I loved doing that and I wish I could come back and do it again. Um, but I really loved that. And that really helped me immerse into like very local culture, especially because the city center of Florence, so many people speak English and there's a lot of tourists year round anyway. So that kind of helps you get out of that shell and then really dive deep into the Italian culture. And then the last thing that I loved going to was the Fiorentina soccer game. That's their local soccer team or football team in Florence. And so that was a lot of fun and everyone got so into it. It was really exciting and much more exciting than going to like a football game here in the states so yeah um so one of my favorite experiences like that I had there was I joined the Italian family club and this was it was one of the best decisions I made there um and I wasn't taking any like Italian classes or anything so I was really nervous but they did a really good job pairing me so I had a family that um like they were able to speak English really well um and it was just such a cool experience because like I would go over to their house for dinner and it was like outside of the city center. So I got to see more than just like kind of like the touristy, like busy parts of Florence and just like learn more about them and their family and like the mom, she cooked me dinner and it was amazing. And it was so much fun um, having that experience because I felt more like, like I didn't feel like as much of a tourist when I was like out, outside of the city center with them, which was really fun. Uh, and then like Lauren said too, like you, you have to go to the museums and, and the markets and everything like that. Like everything is so amazing there. And there was like a chocolate festival, like one of the days I was there that we just like walked into and that was so much fun. So there's always like super cool stuff going on. So just like look around for it. Cause there's more than just like the like main museums and stuff. So, oh, um, can you guys tell us uh, something that either was surprising to you or um, something that you wish that you knew before you left? Um, surprising? I was surprised at how many people spoke English when I got there. I was ready to be a full head hit with Italian 24 seven. So I was kind of ready to adapt to all of that, which I think I did pretty well and I picked up um, Italian here and there to like help my roommates who like weren't as willing to pick it up um, to communicate with people there which I which they really appreciate by the way so if you know you kind of go out of your way to learn their language they'll help you if you're struggling so they really like if you know you get to know their language and what their culture is about. Um, another thing was I think living arrangements. I didn't have any expectations of what my living arrangements would be but then living with seven other girls was kind of a lot after a while so I would say you know make sure you know you're doing things for yourself and you're involved in other things outside of doing things with all of your roommates which sometimes you'll want to cling to because those are the only people you really know there so definitely kind of get out of your comfort zone a little bit and try something new. Yeah, I was definitely also surprised by everyone speaking English. Um, but again, like, if you try, it's definitely gonna be better, even if you only know like a couple of sentences. Um, and it'll help you just kind of feel like you fit in a little bit more better there. Uh, I was also surprised by like, how walkable the city was. Like, I was really nervous that like, my phone maps wasn't gonna work, and I was gonna be lost like every day. But like, you get to like understand the city really quickly, especially like walking to class every day, you get to like, not only like see the city, but like you start to like understand it a little more. So I was surprised by that because I thought I was gonna get lost every day, but it's not hard. All right. Um, so uh, Mattia, can you describe um, just uh, briefly the arrival uh, process for students, like what the orientation is? So, you know, like how Sarah was talking about being nervous about getting there and getting oriented, um, but I know you guys go through orientation. So can you touch on that? All right. So, I mean, as soon as you are on the plane, you are fine because as soon as you landed in Florence, you cannot get lost because as soon as you get out, there is only one terminal. And as soon as you get out, you will find our advisor with the red sweatshirt, a huge FUA sign, so you won't miss them. And of course, you can request a pickup service, okay, in which uh, we will ba basically be there uh, with your set of key and your welcome package and through minivan, escort you to your apartment and show you how to 
get inside the apartment and how everything works. Or you can easily get a taxi, which is super safe in Florence, and get to the main campus, collect your keys, and then go to checking in your, your apartment. Then the next day, we usually have orientation. Uh, we do have um, academic orientation, student life orientation. So, I mean, like living in Florence, how to navigate the city, the, band, the ATM thing that we were saying before, for example, or how housing maybe is a little bit different, Wi-Fi might be a little bit slower, the plumbing system is really ancient, let's say, stuff like this. And then, of course, we do also the permit of stay, which it's one of the most boring things of study abroad. It's just one afternoon, okay? We are doing this together. We are filling out all together the paperwork. Then we go all together, smiling and happy at the post office, waiting in the line. And then once we do this, it's fine. It's all set. And then you, they will just give you some receipt that you have to keep for the entire semester, and which are the actual proof that you are, made, you are legally in Italy. And then you can just enjoy. So let's say the first two, three days, it's just orientation. It's a lot of information. And then we will repeat the same information also over the week. The good things that after these three days, then you have the weekend and then usually then classes started. And the first week, of course, we are more, uh, let's say, easy going and we help you with everything, finding the class, uh, if you understand something or if you are late, it's not a problem. Uh, our advisor, they would be all over the facility, red sweatshirt, hey, sorry, can I ask you for help? And they would be there for help. So the first the three days are intense, also because you might be jet lag as well. Uh, don't worry, you're not the first one. All right, so uh, we are beginning to, to wrap things up. So um, if uh, from our audience, if you guys do have any questions, again, feel free to chat them uh, so that we can ask um, our panelists your questions. Um, Mattia, one that we had come through was, are there any sports clubs um, that are local that students could join um, if they're not available on campus? So every Tuesday night, as I mentioned before, we have what we call sports night. So sports is football, soccer in, in Florence. So we bring our students to, to play soccer every Thursday night. Uh, there are some clubs, it's not, other sports are not really popular, but in the past we have, I'm a rugby player. So we had students going to play rugby, rather than tennis, basketball or, or anything. So even this is a question that you can direct to our student life department and they're always searching and everything for you. So. Of course, yeah, it would be like sports club for you as well. Uh, another question we just had come through was uh, asking about summer. And since Sarah and Lauren uh, both went for the semester, um, Mattia, do you know about how long classes would be uh, during the week for an FUA summer program? So let's say if you choose, because summer it's divided in three weeks section. So you can also decide to do a 12 week session in which would be more or less like a semester. Uh, usually student pick like the intensive uh, courses, which is a three weeks course in which you will have class every day for 12. For each course, we have one class every day. And then after three weeks, if you are staying longer, so meaning six weeks or 12 weeks or 12 weeks, you change class and you start with another course. So let's say if you come for a three week or six week, typically you will do like between two and four courses totally. Excellent. Um, and uh, we have a freshman who's interested in going uh, in the fall semester of her junior year. So in a, in a while. So um, from our students, when would you, um, start planning for, for your study abroad? When do you wish you had started and when did you start, start planning for your study abroad? I started meeting with Catherine, I think just very vaguely in the fall of my sophomore year. And then, you know, we had like more meetings as it started to get to um, the spring semester of my sophomore year and kind of just like talking about like what's gonna happen in the spring. Cause then it gets very intense, very fast because there are dates you need to hit and you need to make sure you're on top of it not to like scare anybody, but as long as you're on top of everything, it'll be fine. Obviously you can do everything last minute, but I'm a person that likes to plan in advance. So just like talking about it beforehand helped a lot. And then in the spring, 
Um, you'll do a lot of different things to help you get accl acclimated and it's like kind of a gradual process and not like, okay, I signed up, I'm leaving. So I would definitely say more um, your spring semester, sophomore year. Yeah, I would say like if you're interested, like there's no harm in going into the office and just like talking about it, but we really started doing like paperwork and stuff this semester before. Excellent. Um, so we have a question about, do you remember the apps you used for travel? So Lauren, you had mentioned some of the apps um, earlier uh, and we'd like to have you share some of those if you remember them. So Google Maps will be your best friend anywhere you go across the whole world. I mean, like lovely, use it if you need it, but definitely try to get around Florence like by yourself and try to figure it out. But Google Maps definitely won. Um, I think it was like Train Italo or Train Italo was one of them. Um, oh, crap, there was a couple other. I'll have to like look back in my, um, if you want to email me, I will email you back, but <laughs> I can't think of all of them. But if you search even um, just like, you know, Yes, Train Italia. There's a whole train station <laughs> that does that. But there's like a bunch of different apps and you can find tickets for cheap and kind of like look and compare prices across different apps um, and plane tickets too. So if you just like Google Italian apps for like transportation, then like there will be some that pop up. If not, I'll go, I'll look back at mine that I downloaded. All right. Well, I think we're coming to our conclusion here. So thank you all for attending. Uh, I hope you all are still interested in uh, studying abroad in Italy and in Florence. Um, just to kind of give you a very brief what the next steps are. Um, if you are interested in meeting with Catherine, um, you can message her. Uh, you can um, set up an appointment. Uh, we have appointment buttons on our website. Uh, and that's the best way to get started this semester. We're doing mostly virtual or phone call appointments. Um, and then uh, we can get you started on which semester or summer you're wanting to go uh, and just kind of get you in touch with um, uh, all the information. And then also, again, if you're wanting to contact Lauren or Sarah directly, uh, they've put their email in the chat and they are uh, study abroad student ambassadors with our office. So they actually want to talk about their programs. So don't feel bad about emailing them. I'd probably put the subject like FUA or Florence and they will be very excited to see that in their inbox. <laughs> um, so hopefully we will see you all very soon. Um, the next upcoming deadline is summer, uh, which would for our office is March 1st. But again, you do wanna start a little earlier than the deadline. Uh, so we mostly see people planning um, now or January, February to get that all prepared. Uh, so again, thank you all so much. I'm just checking one more time to make sure we don't have any last questions. So we don't. Ebony just put up our website um, there in the chat as well in case you're wanting to make that appointment. But thank you all and have a wonderful day. <laughs>